the first thing I want everybody to understand is we don't have all the answers. What we're concerned about is that there are companies using big data really to the negative benefit of their customers. That is, they're taking advantage of customers with big data. So we want to be supportive of the companies that are on the right side of that equation. And at the moment, the three you cited there are on the right side. I look at Amazon and say, I hope that they stay on the right side. You, know, you think they are on the right side? I, it's hard for me to tell. Amazon's a hard company to get on the inside. I'm not sure of everything they're doing. I love their Super Bowl ad, but you know, I, I look at this and I have an enormous amount of respect for what Amazon's doing, and I think they are perfectly capable of being on the right side. In fact, I think all of these companies can be. And all we're trying to do is give a place for people to come and say, I'm concerned about this issue. I want to stay informed on it. I want to participate in the process of figuring out the right answers and helping these companies make good decisions. Again, this is not an us versus them kind of situation. We would love to have Facebook and Google and others embrace these ideas because we think they can be amazingly successful without harming their users. From an engineering standpoint, is it about writing better, more humane algorithms or having fewer algorithms or something else? I mean, the advertising business model is what creates the incentives to addict people. And so you would have to manage the, uh, the advertising business model really differently. In the case of Google, if you look on their, their kind of AdWords part, there's nothing wrong with that. That is, I express an interest in a product, they show me cool products. To me, that's completely fine. If I look at the problem on Facebook, there you have an incentive to promote fear and anger with people, to polarize, and there are a lot of social problems that come out of the way Facebook's model has been implemented. And I would love to see Facebook move to a subscription model. I think they can be the over-the-top solution of the future. And in order to do that, they have to align their interests with the interests of users and publishers and media companies, which candidly I think would be a better business model than they have now. So when I look at this, I think there's happy endings for everybody here, but we're going to have to do some experimentation, which at the moment, you know, we're just beginning that conversation. Well, Facebook says they're trying to be more responsible. Zuckerberg, of course, well, changing content, trying to <laughs> you know lower some of these viral videos. But they said, hey, guess guess what? You That's know, a lot of people watch. Courtney, I wish they were actually doing things that would make a difference. The thing that bothers me about this is that they're treating this like a PR problem rather than a substantive problem, and. The really simple solution is to look at the 2018 election and realize that all the things that allowed the Russians to manipulate us in 2016 are still present, and now hundreds of people are going to try to use it. And I don't know who they're going to be, whether it's going to be North Korea or whether it's going to be the Chinese or the Russians, or whether it's just going to be people at home who shouldn't be doing it. But right now, Facebook needs to make the its users aware that there is this threat and that they have the opportunity to essentially beat manipulation by voting, hmm. right? Because the goal of the manipulation is to keep you from voting and to make you not believe in democracy. Well, so they, so we they would argue, we're they used to standards bodies for technology, but you're advocating for a standard body for ethics, for design on how these things work. Is there any precedent for companies actually bowing to that sort of thing? Not that I'm aware of, but I do think they bow to public pressure. So what we're really trying to do is to sit there and say, you know, people are concerned. They have a right to be concerned. They also have a right to have their opinions reflected in the products that they buy. And the truth is, these products are so convenient, they're so compelling, that we got addicted to them without seeing the dark side. Now that we see the dark side, we have to push back. John, I don't know what form that's going to take. And candidly, there are a lot smarter people to solve that problem than me. But I am in a position where I can call everybody's attention to it with your help. And knock wood, we're going to wind up in a great place. All right. We had this, we, as you were walking off set last week, I said, do you think we're going to see a drop in engagement from Facebook when they report? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got our first quarter yep. on quarter decline in DAUs. And that's not, that's more than a PR uh, pitch, right? I mean, they're what? doing things that are actually hurting no. their... I don't think so. I think that preceded the changes that they made and the changes that they made may imagine for a moment that that Facebook has perfect information on what's going on with their users and they have it in real time. And if you saw a rollover in DAU, wouldn't it be logical to go out there and make some changes that you could then Ooh. blame Cle the So that's 3D on? chess. Well, if that's what they're doing. These are the smartest people I've ever worked with. And so I, I assume they're a lot smarter than I am. And I think you have to give them credit for thinking of things like that. And, you know, it, they had plenty of time. And the thing I would point out here is that that was just a blip. I don't know that that's an actual structural change. You know, look at the numbers. I mean, 
the, 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 the ARPU, you know, the average revenue per user in the quarter just went ballistic, right? I mean, from a, as monetization goes, Facebook's still in the sweet spot of its curve. And that's why I want them to use this strength to make changes, right, before it's too late. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.